Those drug overdoses. The CDC says overdose deaths hit a new record high of 107,000 just last year alone. And this is now the leading cause of injury related death here in the U.S. And just look at the numbers since 1999. Across the board, drug overdose deaths are up. That blue line at the top, synthetic opioids, mainly fentanyl, rising above them all. News Nation's Tom Dempsey is live for us in our nation's capital with a closer look, Tom, at this CDC re report. Yeah, just so many sad things out there, Nicole. The CDC says every five minutes, someone dies of a drug overdose in the country. Now, the agency and other medical groups on the front lines of this issue say critical things can be done to save more lives. Everybody in our area knows somebody that's related to a substance abuse issue of some sort. As a member of the Mingo County, West Virginia quick response team, Keith Blankenship has seen the tragic side of drug addiction. It is about as bad as you perceive it to be, uh, possibly a little worse. His team tasked every day with treating overdoses that he says impact all ages and backgrounds. Over the last two years, he believes the pandemic has made things even worse. We know COVID has had a major influence on people's uh, mental capabilities. I mean, they just, they're turning to other solutions. On Wednesday, the Centers for Disease Control quantified the crisis. Last year, the agency says over 107,000 people died of overdoses across the U.S., the highest total ever, with fentanyl blamed in over half the cases. It is heartbreaking. It's unprecedented in the history of this nation. Following the release of the report, White House drug policy czar Dr. Rahul Gupta spoke with News Nation while highlighting the impact addiction programs and access to harm reduction tools like fentanyl testing strips, emergency overdose treatment, and free syringe exchanges could bring to the fight. We want to be able to meet people where they are, offer them the help such as treatment, and make sure that we're able to get the help to people when they need it, where they need it. For now, Keith Blankenship remains on the front lines, hoping more help comes soon to save more lives. It's a generational problem, and it's going to take a long time to solve it. And if we don't start now, it's hard to tell when it'll get solved. The CDC says the fastest rises in drug overdose deaths remain among minorities, especially black men. Nicole? Yeah, staggering numbers there, Tom. Thank you for that. Well, joining us now to discuss the rise in overdose deaths, Dr. James Basante, Matthew McFarlane. They are from the Bail Project, who has recovered from his drug use. Matthew, Dr. Basante, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Nicole. Well, doctor, let's start with you. You know, 107,000 drug overdose deaths last year alone. It is an absolutely staggering number. How did it get to that point? I believe there are a lot of factors for overdose right now. Um, the situation has worsened, but it's been bad for a long time. Um, when we think about individuals dying of drug overdoses, oftentimes we think of opioids, but increasingly we're seeing people overdose on stimulants and other substances, fake pressed pills that look like other drugs uh, that people use recreationally are leading the overdose crisis right now. You know, and Matthew, you know, you're going on seven years sober now. Congratulations to you on that. You. Talk to us, how did the pandemic make things worse, you know, in your estimation? I, I think being separated from people, you know, um, being unable to attend 12-step groups and having a community of support certainly uh, makes recovery harder. So, I mean, there were some online platforms that came out during the pandemic that you were able to at least talk to other people. Um, but, you know, there'd be weeks at a time where you wouldn't even leave your house. And so you can imagine not having that support, you know, how challenging that could be for somebody. You know, and doctor, hearing that, you know, obviously we know that the pandemic made so many things worse, but how do we make things better? What are some steps we can take to make things better? Well, the most important thing to remember is that uh, substance use disorders, addiction are highly amenable to treatment. They are chronic diseases. Sometimes we have this sense of hopelessness. And one of the most important things we can infuse into addiction is the sense of hope that there are treatments out there that work. Unfortunately, far too few people are given access to evidence-based treatments. Only about one in 10 individuals would benefit from treatment in the United States of America with a substance use disorder or gaining access to that care. So part of this has to be just expanding access to care we know works. 
You know, and I, and I want to get your answer on this next question. Uh, I want to get it from both of you. But, you know, we just heard Tom Dempsey there talking about those fentanyl test strips. Now, critics say they may actually encourage drug use, but there are a lot of people really pushing for these. Doctor, what do you say about these test strips? Well, the thing to remember is that dead people don't get a chance to recover. So the most important thing that we're doing is keeping people alive. Um, the overdose crisis is worsening. We're headed in the wrong direction. Harm reduction measures save lives and nothing else. Uh, overdose re uh, reversal kits like Narcan is a life-saving drug that empowers individuals. And it really restores a sense of hope in communities that are struggling with the drug epidemic as we see it today. Fentanyl stri test strips are another way to empower individuals. Remember, recovery, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Recovery is a very individualized journey, and for some people, that's nonlinear, and there are stopping points along the way. And for a community, for providers, we have to be opening to, open to anyone's recovery journey. You know, and, you know, Matthew, I saw you nod there as the doctor said, that, you know, dead people don't recover. Again, you know, you're going seven years now being sober. What do you think about these fentanyl test strips? Do you think they're a good idea? I think harm reduction programs continually seem to get a bad rap. And um, I myself wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Narcan. I have overdosed many, many times. Um, and people, friends, family would bring me back with something that looks like this. It's a Narcan nasal spray. Um, but the, the bottom line here is that I wouldn't be here at seven years sober today. What you're seeing there is a picture of what my bedside table used to look like and what I would wake up to every morning. Um, and that's a, a, a mug shot of the last time um, I got arrested when I was, last time I used. But um, I'm here today because of harm reduction programs, you know, being able to get clean needles. I, I was lucky I didn't get AIDS while I was out there. Um, I did get hepatitis, but I didn't spread it to other people because I had access to clean needles um, and works. And so, you know, today I carry this stuff. It's, you know, this is to somebody going through an overdose, what an asthma pump is, somebody going through an asthma attack. And um, I use it frequently. In fact, I used it a couple weeks ago to a gentleman that was overdosing in front of a gas station. So I keep it with me. Um, I would recommend that everybody does. Uh, it's a lifesaver. And Matthew, I, I don't, I don't want to to just gloss over the fact that you are seven years sober. That is a huge deal. Seriously, congratulations to you. Now you said that you overdosed many times. What did it take for you to finally, that last time, to say that you know this is it? I'm done. I've hit the bottom. Yeah, I think it was a combination of things, Nicole. Um, certainly spiraling in and out of Cook County Jail, going in and out of jail, racking up felony charges for possession. Um, did not help. Um, I was actually more scared about going into jail because of the withdrawal that I would face from the heroin uh, that I was using. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it was an opportunity that the Cook County uh, Circuit Court gave me to go into a program um, called Drug Court. And I was able to enter into an organization called Gateway Foundation where I was able to um, get a footing, um, get some supports and start my path to recovery. Well, there's certainly lots of conversation to be had around this. It affects so many people. I don't think there's a person in this country who has not been affected in some way. Matthew, Dr. Basante, thank you so much for taking time for, with us this evening. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Nicole. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.